the Asus VivoBook 13 Slate OLED T3300KA. I spent the past two weeks with this device that Asus exclusively sent it to us here in Malaysia. And again, I have to bid my thanks to Asus once again for this special opportunity. But since this video is going to be a review, Asus has zero control over what we have to say in this video. And throughout my two weeks of usage, I have discovered a lot of quirks that I think you need to know. Okay, our ASUS VivoBook 13 Slate OLED comes in this special edition box at the back here and you can watch our unboxing at the top right corner there. And I think what you're seeing on this table here is exactly what you get in your package. However, I can't confirm it because at the footnotes of the product page for this device here, it states that accessories are available in most countries bundles package, but the bundle package may vary according to countries. So we'll start off by putting everything aside and we'll talk just about the tablet itself. So this device is rather lightweight and I mean the main selling point of this thing here is going to be that OLED screen. So it comes with a 13.3 inch OLED screen that's just gorgeous and it comes with super high color accuracy as well. And we tested it, it goes beyond 99% for both DCI-P3 and sRGB color gamuts. And yet, it does come with some decently sized bezels to prevent accidental touches if I'm holding it like this. And then we also have speakers on this tablet, four of them actually, two on each side, but they are clumped up at the bottom part, the lower part of this tablet here. Have a listen. Combining the lightweight tablet body with this 13.3 inch gorgeous OLED display with those speakers, it converted this tablet into a fantastic device for content consumption. Plus, it also supports Dolby Atmos and Dolby Vision 2 which you can find this utility pre-installed in the laptop to configure it however you want. And then comes the other accessory that comes in the box which is this magnetic cover stand. So it snaps to the back of the device and it provides two different functionality, one in the form of the kickstand and secondly in terms of protection. So this little kickstand here of course can prop up the device like this, but you can also extend it outwards a bit more and use it in vertical mode. So personally speaking, I don't think I'll be using this device with this magnetic thing detached because I can just use it like this whenever I choose. So yeah, I will just leave it permanently attached to the tablet. And now comes the detachable keyboard. So this little keyboard here just snaps to the bottom of this tablet real easily via magnets if I can align it correctly. There you go. And the keyboard itself feels very good to type on to the point where I would say this keyboard is better than a lot of laptops keyboard. Each key has a really nice rough texture on it and the travel distance is also very well done. So when I'm typing on this keyboard, I can feel the springiness and the feedback of it. It just makes it so fun to type on. While this is called the detachable keyboard, it also comes with a pretty big trackpad too. So this trackpad is large and centered to the keyboard area and it also has pretty decent palm rejection overall. And I would just have to say that this trackpad is very similar to the VivoBook Pro 15 OLED that we reviewed recently, so check it out at the top right corner there too. I just wish that ASUS tuck the trackpad underneath this whatever material they're using because tucking it under the trackpad means that dust will not go inside the trackpad, which I think a lot of people will want that. And lastly is the ASUS Pen 2.0. Now I'm not an artist, but this pen here is actually quite good for note taking and also for drawing diagrams, writing equations, all of those stuff. And according to the website, this pen has 4096 pressure levels with 266 hertz sampling rate. There's also two buttons at the lower side here. One of it is for eraser, another one is for right clicking. 
and these two buttons cannot be customized. And at the top of this pen here, there is one button which is kind of reminiscent of the Man in Black pen. So this button here is fairly simple. You can configure it in the Windows settings menu. So a single press will bring up the Microsoft whiteboard and then double pressing it will bring up the Windows snipping tool. However, if you do want to utilize this button here, you do need to charge the pen and pair it via Bluetooth to the tablet. And to charge it, you just have to pull this apart and then you can find the USB Type-C port here. I find this to be quite a trade-off compared to the quadruple A battery solution that we've seen in the past because a rechargeable battery is handy in case it runs out of battery and you can just plug it in and charge. But if the battery ever degrades, then uh, you're gonna have a tough time changing out that battery. And just a quick mention, I forgot where I found this cable when I unboxed the ASUS VivoBook 13 Slate OLED. This is a USB Type-A to Type-C, both male. Uh, I cannot plug it into this tablet to charge the ASUS Pen 2.0, so I'm not sure what's going on. I can plug it into this power supply, but uh, do you even need 65 watts to charge a pen? And it also comes with this magnetic pen holder thing that just snaps onto the back of this tablet's magnetic kickstand thing. So how I use it is actually quite fancy, convenient I would say. So if you see the whole thing looks like this and then you can snap it onto the back of this tablet like this. So when I want to use the pen, I can just rip out the entire contraption, use it on the tablet, then once I'm done, just snap it back in. And also, please do not throw away the box of the ASUS Pen 2.0 because inside there, we have a total of three additional pen tips that we can choose from. We have H, HB, and B pen tips. The 2H pen tip has already been pre-installed onto the ASUS Pen. And if you want to switch it, you have to use this piece of plastic that is included in the box. However, this piece of plastic is very flimsy and whenever I try to take out the included pen tip, uh, I'm very afraid of this piece of plastic breaking because you can see how fragile and flimsy this piece of plastic really is. So now we got the entire device assembled and it just looks like a Microsoft Surface device, right? I mean, I did review one of the Microsoft Surface device a while back and I know those kind of form factors have a lot of weird quirks in it. It takes more space compared to a traditional laptop and you need to use it in a completely flat surface like what we have here on the table. And one thing good is that if I want to use the touchscreen because of the kickstand, this whole screen doesn't wobble. And then comes the specs of the ASUS VivoBook 13 Slate OLED. As you might have realized, this is a very low power device and that is why it doesn't come with a fan. So this device is powered by the Intel Pentium Silver N6000 that has a base frequency of 1.1 GHz, 8 gigs of RAM at 3000 MHz, and 256 gigs of NVMe SSD. Now, I should mention that this particular variant that we have here is the highest end variant available. There is no way to upgrade this device at all, so everything is sealed off. I originally thought that this device is going to get a double whammy and severely hindered performance because of that chipset and also that Windows 11, which I think almost sounds like a recipe for disaster and it takes a lot of patience to use this device. And originally, I was right because the boot times were agonizingly slow. Chrome pages, while loading any Chrome page, will pack the CPU at 100% CPU utilization. And even making YouTube videos go full screen, gonna take like 3-5 seconds like that. It's just infuriating. And then I realized something. When I plug this power supply into the VivoBook Slate, VivoBook 13 Slate, then the performance gets a lot better. And then I checked and my suspicion is also correct because it defaulted to best power efficiency mode. Uh, no wonder it lags so badly to the point where typing on Google Keep has a noticeable delay. So I immediately changed it to best performance and things got a lot better. 
The CPU ran about 2.2 GHz for most of the time, even though it's on battery. And those little annoyances with the lagginess that we mentioned earlier is now gone. Typing on Google Keep feels snappy. Making YouTube videos go full screen is also much faster, even though it's not the fastest. But the boot times are still slow, but <laughs> I'm okay with that. Also, do keep in mind that this power mode setting is in a separate page, independent from the power plan menu in Windows. These are just mm, some quirks that Windows has and we have to live with it. So with that out of the way, can we actually play some games using this tablet? Actually, it depends on how you define the word games because for me, I'll say yes because I can play games like uh, Later Alligator which looks absolutely magnificent on this OLED screen and I also highly recommend you to check out this game because it, um, it's kind of weird, quirky, charming and you should check out these kind of indie developers and support them. And then some other games like Papers, Please also works great with this laptop. And also using touchscreen to play Papers, Please is like cheating. You can also run graphical novels and point and click adventures on this tablet. They all work perfectly fine and they also look amazing on this kind of OLED panels. Thanks to how many of these games are available on Steam and also itch.io, I'm gonna spend a lot of time using this tablet just for that purpose. And suddenly, all of a sudden, that Intel Pentium Silver N6000 seems like an adequate chip, right? Well, hold on a minute because we need to talk about Windows 11 and about that RAM. We are lucky enough to get this device with 8 gigs of RAM because anything lower than 8 gigs is gonna be horrendous. So after a fresh boot in Windows, and I made sure nothing else is running in the background, it already consumed 3.3 gigs of RAM. Running Chrome and Spotify will jack that RAM usage up to 5.1 gigs straight away. And keep in mind that at this point, I have already uninstalled the McAfee antivirus software and removed a lot of the Windows 11 bloatware that came along with this laptop. So how I use this device is pretty simple. I also keep Chrome and Spotify running at the same time and sometimes it will spike up to 8 gigs of RAM depending on what type of website I'm visiting. With those type of usage, the battery life of this tablet comes with a 50 watt hour battery by the way. At the best performance setting and at the screen brightness of 60% because I want that DC dimming, I only got about 5 to 6 hours of battery life out of a single charge. Hmm, And that kind of divided an opinion in me because it kind of Depends on what perspective you're looking this device at. So in terms of a Windows tablet, I would say it's pretty decent battery life overall. But if you're looking at it from an Android or iPad kind of situation, then that five to six hours of battery life is absolutely horrendous. But because of how I usually use a Windows machine, multitasking heavily with Chrome and Spotify running at least, and then all of a sudden, those kind of use case is not comparable to any Android or iPad tablets at all. And we should also mention that once again, this power supply is a 65 watt power supply. It charges this device using USB Type-C, but eventually I didn't even have to use this because I just used some Ugreen gun charger that I have. Then it charges this device perfectly fine. Also, let's just do a quick highlight of the ports of this laptop because it's pretty simple. Everything is placed on this part here. So we have a 3.5mm combo audio jack. The aforementioned double USB-C ports for both charging and they also support DisplayPort out mode. And then another micro SD card reader. I absolutely have no idea why this micro SD card reader is there, but at least it's better than having an empty space there. And as a quick mention, the power button is located here at the top right corner and it also has that feature where it temporarily saves your fingerprint when you press the button to boot up. However, I think that feature is not working for most of the time. And number one, I don't know, it's because this button is way too flush with the tablet's body to the point where I can't feel it and position my finger properly. or the boot times are way too slow to the point where it just forgot my fingerprint was ever there. And by the way, there's also a volume rocker at the immediate corner around this power button here. It's also very flush with the tablet's body and I didn't realize it was there until I'm doing this review. Conclusion time then. From what I can find out, this 
whole set is going to price at about 600 US dollars before tax. Directly converting that into Malaysian Ringgit is about 2,500. And I think for that price range, uh, you need to know what you're getting into. For me personally, I do think that the price is kind of okay. But also that is how I usually use a Windows based machine. So the value I get out of this type of user experience is, I would say kind of worth the money, especially for the OLED screen for media consumption as well. However, you do need to keep track of what kind of apps you're running because the Intel Pentium Silver N6000 with Windows 11 doesn't leave much leeway in terms of how many tasks you can run at the same time. And so before we end this review, I gotta address one comment that's pretty interesting and that is asking us to compare this kind of device with a Xiaomi or Samsung tablet and I would say it's kind of not fair to compare it because of the one thing that is very important to me, operating system and all of the apps that you can run on those operating systems. Uh, for example, even though this device I would say is not really that powerful, I still managed to run Photoshop, the full-fledged version of Photoshop on Windows. That is not available on iPad or Android at all and that's where the value of Windows tablets come into play. But I also want to bring up the iPad Pro for a moment because if you combine the iPad Pro with the Apple's Magic Keyboard, then it becomes a very compact, much more stable to be actually used as a laptop on my lap directly, unlike this device which you have to use on a flat surface. I mean, this kind of design is obviously patented by Apple because they are like that. But uh, yeah, I think Apple deserves the patent because this is a very nice design and they do deserve credit for their genius design sometimes. But that aside though, we do have this unique little device with us and I'm going to explore some other operating systems for this type of form factor device and I am going to try Chrome OS next because I have a confession to make, I have not used any devices with Chrome OS at all. So yeah, I will format this device, change it to Chrome OS and then do a follow up video to let you guys know how my experience with Chrome OS is going to be. So yeah, that's all we have to share with you about this video, the review of the Asus VivoBook 13 Slate OLED. Yeah, that naming scheme is going to be a bit difficult to remember. So yeah, if you have any other questions, do leave them down in the comment section below and we'll see you guys in the next video. Oh, by the way, it also comes with this pouch, which you can hold it as a shield. <laughs>